Benefiting the Living and the Dead, Chapter Seven, Commentary. This chapter is beneficial to the living and the dead. How does it help the living? This part of the sutra text makes it clear. Sutra. At that time, a star would be said by my side. I said to the Buddha, "Won't on it one." I see that every single moment. A stirring of thought on the part of beings of Jambu Tripa is in offense. Beings tend, beings tend to use up any wholesome benefits they accrue, and many of them end up retreating from their initial resolve. If they encounter evil conditions, they magnify them with every thought. They are like people trying to carry heavy ropes. While walking through mud, each step becomes more difficult, and the ropes more cumbersome as their feet sink deeper. If they meet a mentor, he may be strong enough to listen or even totally remove their burdens, helping them. Thus, the mentor will then advise them to stay on solid ground and be mindful never to go back. Into that treacherous path. Commentary. At that time, while the seventh chapter on benefiting the living and the dead is being explained, a stubbornly sad Bama sad Bama said to the Buddha, "Won't honor one. I see that every single moment of stirring of thought on the part of beings of Jambu Pipa is an offense. What do beings of Jambu Pipa?" Think about. They think about that which is deviant, that which involves lust, that which they are greedy for, and that which they are selfish about. They are jealous and obstructive. When someone is better than me, I am jealous. For example, being jealous of someone more intelligent than me, or when someone is worse than me, I look down on them. Thinking they are less than me, which is really stupid. We do not promote stupid individ- individuals and are jealous to those who are wise. The right thing to do is to teach deluded individuals so that they become wise and intelligent. But people refuse to act this way. This is why every movement or stirring of thought is nothing but an offense. We do not act like bodhisattvas. Who are happy when other people are better than us? We respect them more instead of being jealous. We try to think of ways to make those who are worse than me on par with me. This would be the resolve of bodhisattvas. Since we do not develop resolves like bodhisattvas, all these thoughts are, are offenses. Beings tend to use up any wholesome benefits that they accrue, and many of them end up retreating from their initial resolve. They throw away all their goodness. Perhaps they do some good deeds and wish to plant some good roots, but they do not last too long. They may study the Buddha Dharma for a year, then quit. Study for two years, then stop or retreat when entering some state. Initially, they have made they they made the resolve to study the Buddha Dharma or leave the home life. But after leaving the home life for, for one year, two years, three years, they feel that the monastic life is no big deal. Three years of cultivation and still no enlightenment or certification to the fruition. It is probably hopeless. They retreat and return to lay life. This is for monastics. For lay Buddhists, after studying for a year, the Buddhas are before their eyes and near them. After two years of study. The Buddhas are as far away as eighteen thousand miles. After three years of studying, the Buddhas are at the edge of the heavens, must retreat from their initial resolve. Therefore, it is said, by not neglecting our initial resolve in cultivation, we have 
what is more than sufficient to become a Buddha if we did not lose our initial thought of studying the Buddha Dharma and all living the whole life that we would have become Buddhas long ago. Monastics must think, why did we live the whole life? What is the difference between monastics and thirty? For instance, lay people like to talk all day long, whereas monastics should speak less. Monastics may say things that are useful, and the way is best to not to talk so much. As it is said, our energy scatters when we open our mouth. Gossip occurs when we move our tongue. Gossip about right and wrong occurs when we talk a lot. Once there is right and wrong, we do not accord with the way. When our energy scatters, we do not accord with the way either. Cultivators must always watch over themselves and not over other people that will be not retreating from our initial resolve. If we mostly retreat from our initially firm resolve, then we forget our resolve after a while. Many end up retreating from their initial resolves. If they encounter evil destiny, uh, evil conditions, they increase such conditions with their every thought. They certainly do not retreat from such evil conditions. I encountered many people who cultivated with utmost sincerity, but were affected by demonic states that they encountered. This is about the evil conditions in general. Any condition that prevents you from cultivating is an evil condition. They magnify them with every thought. Cultivation requires the gathering of body resolve that strengths by the day. Resolve that weakens by the day is even truly lost. We usually do not increase our body resolve by the day, but we deep evil conditions that we encounter by the day. They are like people trying to carry heavy ropes like walking through mud. This is a simile about people walking into mud, which is not so bad except that they carry a big rock or some load that may as heavy as 200 pounds. Walking in mud, one of their feet would sink in and by the time one foot gets pulled out, the other foot sinks in so that they cannot walk anymore. They have an extremely difficult time in the mud, one foot out and the other foot is in. The, uh, the other foot is out and this foot sinks in. They may still walk if they do not have anything heavy with them. But they do have an extremely heavy load on them, which is either karma what is mud, which is their evil karma? What is mud? It is the three evil paths. Each step becomes more difficult. The weight of each step increases and the ropes are more cumbersome that their feet sink deeper with each step. What shall they do if they meet a mentor, he, a Buddha, a Bodhisattva, or an extremely wise teacher, may be strong enough to lighten or even totally remove their heavy burdens. Since they cannot proceed with such a load, they need a good teacher who can help them 